I'm really glad you're able to join us today. We're going to talk about the Certified in Public Health Certification Program. My name is Allison Foster. I'm the president of the National Board of Public Health Examiners. I would like to welcome you today on behalf of the Board of Directors of the National Board of Public Health Examiners. The MVPG is an independent nonprofit organization which has been credentialing members of the public health workforce since 2008. Its board of directors are comprised of representatives from a number of different organizations, ranging from academic public health to governmental public health to accreditation bodies. We also have about a dozen at-large CPHs on our board as well. We've got a lot to celebrate. Since 2008, we've had over 11,000 candidates sit for the CPH exam. We've tested candidates in almost 100 different countries, and currently 13 CEPA accredited schools and programs require their graduating students to take the exam. The first thing I'd like to talk about is why public health certification is important. Chances are, if you're participating in this webinar, you're already interested in getting certified in public health. Let's take a step back and consider why certification is important to the field of public health, and then we can review how it can benefit you and your career. This slide shows the framework that defines a profession. For many years, the public health community has debated whether public health is a goal or a profession. I would like to think that we have decided it is both. That said, there has been a call going back to the 1970s for the need for certification of public health. Most professions have three separate but important components of professionalism. The first one is at the top, accreditation. Accreditation is an objective standard setting process for organizations. We have accredited degree programs at schools and programs of public health. We also have accreditation in health departments. Credentials, meaning degree programs, are the second leg of this professional stool. There have been public health degree programs for over 100 years. What public health has not had is individual certification. Certification is common in many other fields and sets the standards for a profession. The recognition that we were missing individual certification has been discussed over many years. Dating back to the 1970s, the U.S. Surgeon General's Office issued a call for public health certification. CDC has talked about it, as has APHA. Finally, in the early 2000s, the American Public Health Association, which is the membership association of public health, and the Association of Schools of Public Health came together and said, we really need to have a certification program in public health, which will provide assurance of a well-trained and ready workforce. The two organizations came together in 2005, created the MBPG, and charged it with certifying the public health workforce. Many members of the public health profession have a degree in public health, and we are sometimes asked why you would need both a degree and a certification. Well, it's actually not uncommon in other professions to have both a degree and a certification. Most accountants have an accounting degree and their CPA. Board certified physicians have a medical degree. Licensed social workers and registered nurses typically have a degree in their field and certification. These are just a few of many examples of the complementary nature of degrees and certifications. Degrees demonstrate the satisfactory completion of educational coursework. A degree is conferred by a single institution of higher education and once earned does not need to be maintained. A certification, on the other hand, is a designation conferred by a body of representatives of the profession. A certification is an attestation that the individual is competent to work in the field and requires periodic professional development and edu continuing education. While a degree in public health is not a requirement for eligibility at the present time, most CPHs have a public health degree as well. Clearly, certification is good for the field of public health, but let's look at why you should consider becoming certified in public health. Each CPH has their own reason for becoming certified. Some CPH believe the credential will move the field forward. Some earn their CPH because it makes them more competitive in the workplace. I would like you to hear a few testimonials directly from CPHs themselves. We brought a few CPHs into our office and asked them to share why they got their CPH. Let's listen to their stories. I graduated with my MPH two years ago, and I knew that I wanted to be certified in public health. 
my employer was thrilled to see that I have my CPH because they know that I'm a lifelong learner and I will continue to build my skill set. I'm from an underserved community. I'm from Mississippi originally. That's why I decided to pursue a master's degree in public health. And I earned that a couple of years ago. And now with the certification in public health, the communities I serve will know that I'm up to date, I'm keeping up with my education, and I'm striving harder, and it will benefit those communities. After returning from the Peace Corps, it was important to me to continue my public health education. As a community health volunteer in a rural village, I worked closely with decision makers and other community health volunteers. The CPH allows me to enhance my skill set through continuing education credits. I took the CPH exam and got certified in public health as a self-affirmation of the knowledge and skills that I had received during my Master of Public Health program in Policy and Management. It was a fantastic way to share with my family and friends what I had learned during my two-year program. It was also a great way for me to share with the general public that I care about my continuing education and want to advance the field of public health. Even though my coursework provided me with the essential fundamentals of public health goals and initiatives, getting certified will help me excel in my work beyond the classroom to the broader hands-on field of public health, advancing my career as a public health professional. I see the CPH as an opportunity to recommit myself to the field of public health and to renew my knowledge in all core areas, especially those that I don't get a chance to practice on a regular basis. Getting certified in public health is a way for me to show my dedication to my profession and to also show that I'm up to date in the profession and I know what is happening and I can do my job. I hope that video gave you some inspiration why certification is important to public health. It's good for your career and it's important to have profession-wide standards. More than ever, the field of public health can better meet its goals if public health professionals have common knowledge across their areas of expertise. Now let's turn to what it takes to become certified in public health. I'm going to walk you through our eligibility requirements, then information about preparing and taking the exam, and finally, some information about the recertification process. The first step in getting certified is to determine whether or not you are eligible. Because we have several routes to eligibility, I'm going to ask my colleague to take a moment to talk to you about each eligibility criteria. If you're watching this video, you must be thinking about getting certified in public health. We're excited for you. The first step of the CPH certification process is to establish your eligibility to take the CPH exam. Candidates can apply under several pathways. Once eligible, all candidates take the same exam and receive the same credential. There are three CPH eligibility categories, alumni, student, and work experience. The first eligibility category is for alumni of a graduate degree at a CEPH accredited school or program. If your school or program is in CEPH applicant status when you take the exam, you'll be in provisional status until your school or program has been accredited. What if you have a master's or doctoral degree in a field related to public health that is not accredited by CEPH? If you have at least three years of work experience in public health, you'll be eligible under our work experience criteria. For alumni, as long as your graduation date is after the original CEPH date of accreditation, you should be eligible to sit for the exam. If you are not sure whether or not your school or program was accredited by CEPH when you graduated, check out the CEPH website at www.ceph.org under For Students, Resources for Students, and Lists of Accredited Schools and Programs. The first date indicates the original date of accreditation. category is for candidates who are attending a CEPH accredited school or program. As long as your school or program is accredited by CEPH, you will be eligible to take the CPH exam. 
Once you have passed the exam, you will be in CPH provisional status until you have graduated. If you are a student attending a school or program that is in applicant status with CEPH, not only must you graduate in order to be in full CPH status, you will remain in provisional status until your school or program is fully accredited. You can check your school or program CEPH status by visiting the CEPH website. A list of schools and programs which are in applicant status can be found under resources for students. under either of these categories, you will be approved to take the exam as soon as your school or program approves your eligibility. Our system automatically contacts the administrative office of your school or program and lets them know that you are interested in taking the exam. They simply have to log into our website and approve your application. In most cases, responses are received in a week or two. The final eligibility category is our work experience criteria. There are three pathways for candidates under this eligibility criteria. If you have a relevant master's degree or higher in a field related to public health and at least three years of work experience in public health, you will be eligible to take the CPH exam. If you have a bachelor's degree in any concentration and at least five years of work experience in public health, you will be eligible to take the CPH exam. Finally, if you have completed a public health certificate program at a CEPH accredited school or program, but not a full degree, you'll be eligible once you have at least three years of work experience. How do you know if your work experience is related to public health? Public health experience can happen in many different settings and through many roles. We suggest you review the 10 essential public health services. If your work relates to at least one of these, chances are you are eligible. Still not sure? We suggest you go ahead and apply. We will fully refund fees for any applications received under this category that are not approved. Applications received under our work experience category are reviewed by a review committee. Application decisions are usually made in two weeks or less. As soon as your application has been reviewed, you will receive a notification that you are eligible to take the CPH exam. It is worth noting that the Certified in Public Health credential is for all public health professionals, no matter where they earn their degree or are working. Our criteria are for both degrees and experience earned anywhere in the world, not only the U.S. Candidates who attended a college or university outside the U.S. are encouraged to apply. If you determine that you think you're eligible and you're ready to apply, you can start registering for the CPH exam. It's a short, simple process that typically only takes a few minutes. To apply, go to our webpage, click on Get Certified, and there's a drop-down menu that takes you to Apply Now. On this page, there are shortcuts to our eligibility page and a candidate handbook that is a summary of everything you'd ever want to know about the CPH exam process. There's also a link where you can find out more about testing options, and we have a link to our fees and discounts. After you apply, your application will need to be reviewed and approved. If you're applying as a student or alumni, your school or program will receive an email requesting they verify your eligibility. If you're applying under a work experience criteria, your application will be sent out to a review committee. Either way, our goal is to have applications reviewed within two weeks. If you do not receive a response by then, send us an email and we'll follow up. As soon as you're approved, you'll receive scheduling instructions from our testing partner, Scantron, that will allow you to schedule your exam. Once you get those instructions, you can schedule right away or you can wait as long as you want. We do not have a deadline for scheduling the exam. You can wait for months or a year or longer if, you're, if you want to study or life just gets busy. If you ever lose your scheduling instructions, just let us know and we'll assist. 
The base price to take the exam is $385. That's the application and exam fee all rolled into one. But we try to partner with as many organizations as possible so we can offer group discounts and make the exam as accessible to as many people as possible. When you apply, you will be asked a series of questions. And if you're eligible for a discount, the discount will automatically apply at checkout. There are a number of schools and programs that are requiring the exam, and we offer a larger discount to their students and alumni. If you're attending one of these schools or programs, you probably already know about the process and the requirements. The number of schools and programs requiring the exam has been growing about one a year. Let's spend a little time going over the CPH exam process. Candidates receive a four hour window to sit for the exam, which tends to be plenty of time as most candidates take an average of three hours to complete the exam. The exam is made up of 200 multiple choice questions. All questions are single best answer, meaning there are no essay questions. We offer the CPH exam every day of the year, including holidays. We do not have testing windows, so most candidates are able to schedule their exam on a day that's convenient to them. The exam can be taken either at a testing center or on your personal computer via live online proctoring. Our testing network has about 1,400 testing locations around the world, which are open Monday through Saturday every day of the year. Our website has a link where you can search for testing centers near you. We also test by live online proctor, which allows you to schedule your exam 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. To test by live online proctor, you need a private room, a laptop or computer, a single monitor, a mic and a camera. And then when you log in, you'll be joined by a proctor who will be with you virtually during your examination period. When you're finished taking the exam, as soon as you hit submit, you will know right then whether you passed or failed the exam. And by the next day, you can log back into our website and view your detailed score report. If you're taking the exam as a student or alumni, your school or program will have access to your scores. We share your scores because some schools and programs use these as a graduation requirement. Across the board, schools and programs find aggregate scores really helpful in evaluating how they're teaching their curricula. If you sit under a work experience eligibility criteria, nobody can see your scores. We ask for supervisor information in the application only so that we can verify your employment. However, your supervisor will not know that you took the exam and they won't know how you performed unless you tell them. One frequent question we get is how hard is it to pass the exam? This graphic shows the trend of pass rates over time. The average is in the mid 80s, which means most candidates pass the exam on their first attempt. The occasional variance in the pass rates is not due to the difficulty of the exam. It's due to the change in the candidate pool. For example, our pass rate is slightly lower in years when we introduced a change to our eligibility standards. Overall, I hope this graphic makes you feel more confident about your ability to pass the exam. After you pass the exam and become fully certified in public health, we will publish your name to our Search for a CPH webpage. This is a useful tool for employers looking to verify CPH status, as well as a great way for CPH wanting quick access to a letter confirming their status. Shortly after you're fully certified in public health, you will get a copy of the certificate in the mail, along with a lapel pin and more information about recertification. You will also receive a virtual certificate that is a customized URL you can add to your LinkedIn profile or email signature. If you share this link, anyone who clicks on it can learn more about the CPH. It's a great way to share more about your certification with others. Candidates who do not pass the exam can retake the exam at any time. We do not have a waiting period, which means candidates can schedule another attempt as soon as they're ready. The cost is $150 for every subsequent attempt, and there's no limit on how many times a candidate can retake the exam. We have different versions of the exam live at any given time, so if somebody takes the exam several times, they will not see the same set of test questions. I know you're undoubtedly interested in learning what's on the CPH exam. Let's take a moment first to learn how we decide what content is on the exam. Almost all certification exams rely on a process called a job task analysis to decide what is and what is not covered on their exam. 
A job task analysis is basically a complex survey that's given to members of a profession. The survey asks them a long series of questions to determine what they actually do in their current job, not what do they know or what do they wish they knew or what do they wish they'd be doing. We're only interested in what their current job requires at the time. Because the field of public health changes often, we update our uh, exam content every five to seven years by conducting another job task analysis. This allows us to be sure that our exam test candidates on the skills, abilities, and knowledge needed in contemporary public health practice. We spent the next several months analyzing the results, making sure it made sense, and that it was reflective of what we believe was happening in public health. We then took our findings out to many organizations in public health through town halls and presentations and webinars to get feedback. Once we finished that feedback process, we settled on the current content outline, which is basically a map of everything on the exam. The 200 exam questions are organized into 10 domains, like chapters in a book. Within each domain are individual tasks that have associated items or questions on the exam. I will show you where to find these individual tasks in a moment, but let's start by looking at the domains. They are evidence-based approaches to public health, communication, leadership, law and ethics, public health biology and human disease risk, collaboration and partnership, program planning and evaluation, program management, policy and public health, and health equity and social justice. While we have 10 domains, we set our passing score based on your overall performance. We do not have a passing score for each domain. And what that means is you can do a little less well on one domain compared to another, as long as you do well enough overall. It's okay if you have a couple of domains where you're not quite as strong, you just need to be strong enough in the others. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about study resources. It's really important to keep in mind your eligibility is the foundation of your preparedness to take the exam. If you're determined to be eligible, that means you've got a lot of the essential knowledge because of your work experience or the courses you've taken. That said, just about all candidates want to prepare before they take the exam. As a certification body, we are not allowed to produce actual study materials. We can only make a few examples available to you. Fortunately, we have several partners which have created complementary study materials I will now show you. To see the study resources available, go to Get Certified and then click on Study Resources. The first document on that page is our content outline. The content outline is a list of all the topics that are covered by the CPH exam. The content outline is fairly long and detailed. While you might want to review it very thoroughly at some point, a good starting place is to simply scan it. You will likely notice there's some domains where you feel fairly comfortable. Perhaps you studied that domain in school or you might perform it on your job. There are likely going to be other domains where you feel less familiar. How you proceed in studying is up to you, but most candidates choose to start with the domains where they're less familiar. We make a small sample set of questions available, which are not meant to cover the content of the exam. The sample questions are simply a way to get a sense of how our questions are written. We also have a practice exam that is 50 questions that we've retired out of our bank a few years ago. The practice exam is free, and as soon as you finish, you'll receive an email with your results that'll tell you how you did on each question. The practice exam is a good way to assess how prepared you are and where your weak spots are. And hopefully soon, we're gonna have a second practice exam available. So as soon as it's live, we'll be sure to let everybody know. Our partner organizations also make a number of resources available. The Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health produces webinars from time to time, which are all archived on this page. They invite faculty and practitioners to host a webinar in each of the domains, and they go through the basics, what they think you would need to know for that particular section on the exam. You can link through to the archived web webinars through that web page. We get really good feedback on the webinars. They're free on demand, so I suggest you take a look at those. We also partner with different organizations to hold review courses. We've done so with APHA at their annual meeting for many years, for example. We work with APHA in that case to bring in faculty or practitioners to give short seminars in each of the domains over a two-day period. We've also partnered with the Association of Public Health Nurses, for example, and other organizations. 
If you're interested in participating in a review course, keep an eye on our study resources page. We will post the dates and the events as they're planned. Once you're fully certified, you will need to maintain the CPH through a recertification process. The way our process works is you will report 50 recertification credits every two years. However, our process is a little different than other certifications for two primary reasons. One is that we allow CPH to report many types of activities that many other certifications don't. We purposely built our process so CPH would not have to go to specific events, especially those that cost money. Going to a conference can be useful, but we realize not everybody is in the position to be able to attend. We know that public health professional development happens in many different ways. We give credit for things like volunteering, leadership service, for participating in exam development, or for some professional contributions like writing a journal article or giving a guest lecture, for example. Our flexibility and recertification is really appropriate to the field that we're in. We really try to have an open mind as to how folks can learn and grow. Our main goal is CPH to be learning something new and evolving as a professional. That is our ultimate goal of the recertification process. The other area where we manage our recertification process a little differently is that we do not have pre-approved providers. Some certifications require you to go through certain providers to earn at least some of your credits. We don't have that requirement because there are just too many providers and too many avenues for recertification opportunities. As long as your recertification activities meet our basic guidelines and the topic is related to public health, then it will count. And what this means is that you have a lot more options and you don't need to worry about going through us to find a provider. You can find them on your own. When in doubt, you could reach out to ask. We have a real-time portal where you log in your activities and keep track of where you are in the recertification process. We will also send you periodic reminders about your upcoming deadlines. And if you need an extension, no problem. You can manage that within your recertification portal. It's the flexibility of our recertification process that makes it easy. There are times though, when CPH have nearly enough credits, but are just a few short. To solve this problem, we've partnered with a couple of different organizations which host databases that allow you to quickly search for recertification activities. You don't have to use any of these tools, but they are there for you if you wish. Once your CPH is conferred, we hope you'll be proud of your achievement. We have a merch site where you can order t-shirts or mugs or other wearables. And the merch site is a great way to spread the word about the importance of certification with others and to pique the interest of your friends and colleagues who might ask, hey, tell me more about that. What is the CPH? Another opportunity to get involved is to join our book club. We have over a thousand members who read between six and eight books a year on a wide variety of public health topics. The book club members select the books and lead the discussions. Frequently, we invite the author of the book to come meet with us for a webinar or a call. Once you're fully certified, we will invite you to participate in the book club, and I hope you'll join. Building a community is important to the certification process. Once you're fully certified, you'll be invited to join our LinkedIn group so you can interact with others that have a CPH. We hope this presentation was useful and it's answered many of your questions. If you have any others, please send them our way at info at nbphe.org. 